December 20th, select board meeting. Uh, first thing on agenda is uh, asking to add anything to the agenda, and I see there's a couple things. Northwest Regional Planning, Regional Water Council, and the minutes from last meeting. Uh, entertain a motion, that, and if anything else needs to be added. I'll motion to make those changes. <clears throat> I'll second it. Paul, I made a motion, Phil seconded the motion to add those two items on the agenda. Any more discussion? And if having none, all those in favor of adding those items signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. And besides, that's been added to the agenda. So I'll hop right on it and get to the first. Uh, Bullet point on the agenda, which is uh, Highway Foreman Joey Clark. Joey Clark. With driveway permits for signatures. Between me and the greenhouse. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. You're on the other side. Raymond. Yeah. The parents. Yeah. The place, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The house. They subdivided. The different people own it now. Oh. And they subdivided it into two, a lot on one side and kept the house and the other piece of land oh. on the other. Sold that and sold hmm. a piece of land to Brad. Nice. <clears throat> Can you sign this somewhere? Um, yep. Are you good? Yeah, the first, let me see, what's this next one? Here? Just the first page here, I think. The, what's the next one say, Phil? Yeah, just the first one, the notice to proceed. You didn't hear from Peter? No, but the sticks uh, truck was in his yard, which is unusual, so. No, I got one. Which I can't believe I found. Well, you'll see the, the access that's there. He needs to upgrade it, cut some trees, and wave it out, and flatten it out. Is he going to be able to make that turn off of Mary Reese? Because he's pretty close to the line there. I can't make that uh, Closer to my line. Oh, is he? Her. Yeah, okay. he's on the, my side of the barn. Oh, okay. it goes down into that. Okay, seat. yeah, yeah. Do you don't you don't need one on this page? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, okay. Final one. Yeah. Uh, oh, final. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's I don't think right we there. ever actually signed that one, but it's that's kind of the final permit. The first one is a notice to proceed following the conditions that we've got, mm -hmm. which I haven't written any in there yet. But that was basically what I just said is what the conditions will be: cut a few trees, widen it out, flatten it out. He's going to want to pretty deep where it comes straight up to the road, so he's going to want to kind of. I have a flat spot, so you can. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I'm trying to picture where. I mean, I know I can visualize, but like where. Um, so he's going through the building permit process. He brought it in this morning. He's got his wastewater permit already, I believe, because he said I he think, ordered his tank. I think Michael was working on that stuff when they yeah, did the, the survey. survey. So, yeah. yeah. So good. Yeah, I know they're working on one this fall, uh, early fall. Yeah. September. Is that a different one? Is that this one? It's but just a, that's just a drawing. It's, it's just a drawing. A drawing. Oh. How far does Eamsburg? Where does that switch over to be? Almost oh. down to Kenny. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. As you get way down to the like the last, oh, if I was to guess, last 500 feet is Berkshire. Oh, no kidding. Hmm. You look sometime just as you're coming down to the, the end where mm -hmm. Todd Kenny's house is. Yeah, yeah. Back on the flat, there's a sign right there on the right hand side of the road, line huh. sign. Yeah. Hmm. And then on the Pearly Road side is by Doug Watson's driveway. Oh, yeah. Is where it goes. Yeah. From right. Doug Watson's right. down so to 118. Uh, 118 is the Did you want to look at that? <coughs> I know. Already. You know, okay. That's all I had. 
Unless you got something else on there that stains for me. No. No. Thanks for the alarm in the morning, whoever goes by. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> this morning I jumped up out of bed, they went by with a plow. And the plow was down, and I'm like, <gasps> because I, I had my alarm set for like 3.30, and it was like 3 o'clock, uh, 4, 4 o'clock, and it was 3 o'clock, I'm like, wow, why are they going by with a plow down? I better get up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a dust in there. Dust yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, some people don't like that alarm. No, I don't mind. Especially <laughs> ones that are closer like to the road. And do it. Okay, we can probably look at the last minute there if we move on to the next. Mm -hmm. Just a little update on the motor. I called oh, yeah. the salesman the other day and said, what's up? You know, I heard the strike's done. He said, yeah, they're back to work, but now they're behind. So they're not even actually taking orders right now, he said. Oh, wow. The message you left is probably February or March, which I assume that means that's when they'll take the order to start building it, and it'll be 60 to 90 days, I assume, after that. But I don't, I don't think he knows for sure now. Hmm. Good thing we started so early. So it's not like with so. a car where you can yeah. just try to find a dealer that has one and bring it to you. Is the price going to change? Uh, it shouldn't. That's what I... I need to talk to him because the way he said before, I was because it had gone on a while before we made our mind up. I said, "Now the price is still good, right?" Yeah, oh yeah. As soon as you order, it's good until whatever you know, another few days from that point. But as soon as you order it, that's it's locked in. Well, we did order it, or we wanted them to order it. They right. just couldn't order it. I know, that's not our fault. So that price should hopefully stay the same. I need to talk to him about that. Right. And he may not have an answer yet either. But yeah. I would say they could say, yeah, uh, you know, it's can hold the price regardless. I mean, I don't know why it should. I don't know. Just gotta make sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was wondering about that. Was, uh, stuff was just, I know they came, Harvest came by about a month ago to tell us just the pirates. You'll be thinking right now what you're going to need four or five months down the road. Wow. No kidding. Because <laughs> some parts are, yeah. yeah. That's like, uh, I guess, the truck parts, too. There's trucks sitting at some of these dealerships getting worked on, just waiting for parts. I oh, the gosh. Town brochures had one to... Yeah, the state's got a bunch of them down, too, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they've had them. <laughs> trucks waiting for parts to come so they can make them go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we wish you a Merry Christmas and yeah, a Happy New Year, Joy. Yeah, for sure. You too. And hopefully you don't get a sleety, rainy storm on Christmas Day. Uh, it looks like it quite might be possible. Really? Something, yeah. Uh, Some kind of mix, yes. Maybe if it'll, it'll wait half the day. Yeah, on, the, on, Christmas, on Christmas Day, yeah. Saturday. Yeah. It might okay. be worse by the time it comes, or it might just go away. Yeah. What about the 27th? Do we know the 27th? <laughs> <laughs> I think that far ahead. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday both. Are Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Monday. Come on, that's the one I need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We'll move on. Uh, yeah, I'll to noodle on around. Look at the minutes from last meeting here. Bye, Joey. Looks good. Yeah, See you, Joey. Right. It does. Okay. Good. We could reprioritize and I could do the armory update. Yeah, while we're waiting, if you want. So, um. Oh, oh, well, we did that already. Oh, sorry. No, we motioned to reorganize. That's what we were doing. Okay. Hey, didn't Dean make the uh, motion on the historical marker? You put a second in, but we didn't put it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dean there. Yeah. And then on the mask thing, do we need? Did we do an, uh, a motion on that, or 
No, because we didn't, we didn't really take any action. Yeah. Did we put that in there, though? Yeah, well, it just says it's um, you consider it. Where, where is it? Where it's it's a, it where Donna DeMar says. Oh, yeah, at yeah. the top. Okay. Yeah. Other than the correction, I'd say a move. So, Pierre, the turn off motion to approve the minutes without a correction of Adam T making a motion on the historical markers. So, I have a second. I'll second it. Bill, did you second it? Any more discussion? If not, all in favor of approving the minutes, say so whatever, say no. Aye. 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 Not in favor, so you to say nay. The minutes are approved. Okay. So we can discuss North Coast Regional Planning Water Council and yep. the update, Robin. Sure. Um, so the update is that tomorrow at 2 o'clock, um, Greta from Regional, the consultant from Lee, and Phil and Billy Joe are going to meet at the Armory at 2 o'clock. They're doing a walkthrough with the consultant to sh basically um, point out what needs to be abated and what could stay um, based on our construction plan. Um, so the, yeah, they're going to do the walkthrough. And so how it's going to roll is after that, um, the consultant will go back and do an estimate of what it would take to abate it. So they're talking like uh, when they were talking about cleaning up the, the lead dust, right? Solvent. And the um, asbestos, if there's asbestos that needs to be removed, or um, yeah, or asbestos that needs to be removed. So the they'll come back with an invoice of which we can decide at that point that we just would pay for it and have it taken care of, of which we would have to bid a contractor. The contractor would have to get a permit from the state to an abatement permit, which most contractors know how to do, um, and take care of it and dispose of it correctly. Um, if we decide to grant it, go through a grant, um, then they would handle that process. So basically, in a nutshell, it's going to come down to probably the number of that invoice. Mm -hmm. If it's like a couple thousand dollars, potentially, we would probably just maybe want to pay for it. It's yeah. a free building. Get, and get, then get just going, get right? the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. If it's a huge sum of money, then maybe we would want to go through the grant. But as we know, if we go through the grant, it's going to take some time. And that's through Northwest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess we just have to see. We just have to see if it's just like fix this, fix that. It's going to run you maybe five thousand dollars. We might be like, okay, yeah. thanks. We'll let a contractor handle it. They'll get their permit from the state, and we'll just pay them. Um, but if it's like you know thirty thousand dollars, so if they if there's something some issue with the, the floor and stuff, uh, maybe. Can ask questions too about. Can we just cover it? Can you do, we have to do remove some it? spray on stuff to right. cover it? Right. Well, like Polly said too, if we're looking into the future of this, if this building's going to be around for for us forever, you know, in 20 years, if we pull the flooring up, or 10 years we pull this flooring up, we're still going to have that stuff underneath it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Right. How long? So then long what? Is? Then we're going to have to flip the whole bill. Right, and maybe right, to point. abate all of it, like you were saying, there's some tiles that aren't, and right. there's some tiles that are. It might be just one room that has it. No, it's all. 
It's two rooms. Okay, two rooms. Um, but it, even if it's two rooms, I mean, what would that run up? You know, that's yeah. what we need to figure out. Right. right? Um, I get, yeah, until we get the money. Till we get exactly. Number, I mean. And maybe it'll be like um, you can cover it, but maybe we'd also know what if what would it cost for us to remove it. Yeah. You know, the two. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at. Mm. Yep. Huh. Two o'clock, yeah. Two o'clock. Yep. Two o'clock. Yep, that's that. I did give him a heads up last week that it would be happening. I just didn't know when. Yep. Yeah, I okay. literally found out at four o'clock. So you said you two are going to be there? I'm Billy not. Joe I'm not going to be okay. Billy, Joe, and Phil. And the contractor. And the contractor and and you, Greta. You, you can have one more slap when we get three. You'll have your <laughs> yeah, horn as a exactly. meeting. <laughs> exactly. All right, so the Regional Water Council. So with the Regional Water Council, um, apparently there's only a couple seats available from how I'm reading it. And Sarah Downs, when I sent her the message and say, hey, got any ideas about anybody who might want to do this yeah. from your group? And she said, as a matter of fact, I wanted to do it. I talked to Dean about it. And she said, there's only a couple seats. But she said, I'm, I really want to be on it. So. Um, she said, I might not get the C, if, even if you nominate me, but she really has interest. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think she'd be a great person. Yeah. I, knowledgeable yeah. for sure. Find anybody we get two seats? So I think the way I'm reading it, there are two seats available. What, um, we, get to, we can nominate one. But you, you should reread re, re the email. I would definitely make a motion to approve Sarah Downs to the water. Water. Nominator. Did I say? I'm losing my mind. Did I I'll say second. that? No. I'll second. You said approve. Oh. I don't know if we can approve. No, exactly. Nominate. nominate. I did that earlier today. I'm like <laughs> mixing my words. So Polly made a motion to nominate Sarah Downs for Northwest Regional Planning and Regional Water Council. Be a second that motion. Any more discussion? Have none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The eyes have it, and Sarah's nominated. I think she'd be a great person. Mm -hmm. We don't have any warrants? Completely forgot them on my desk, so uh -huh. we'll have them today. There wasn't very many. That was only on, on your agenda. What was it? The Regional Water? No. What was it called? Regional Water Council. Regional Water. Thank you. I think they just started. It's a new position. Yeah, like I was going to say I haven't. Somebody is heading up that. I hadn't that heard of it. Which bikes? We also have empty seats on the Regional Planning Commission board. Right. We should. Somebody should get on that puppy. So which ones do we have? Just regional planning? So the regional planning board has two seats, but it's usually a village. Well, it's based in the past. No, wait. It's village had two, yeah. and village has their own. Yeah. And they're empty. They're all empty, which means village, Enosburg proper. Oh, all of them? Yeah. There's no Enosburg member showing up to that, hmm. as far as I know, which means that Enosburg hasn't had their voice in any of those conversations. So just because the board an update, I did I went with Andrew to the Bakersfield oh, okay. slide board meeting and everything was done on the executive there. <coughs> They understood everything that was in front of them. And then I went on, went to Wednesday's meeting. Uh, Franklin had their second meeting. And uh, that was an open meeting. Uh, there was uh, another competitor was there. And they gave their, their pitch and stuff. But, uh, before all that, they, 
they had a, I guess on the last meeting day of the year, they have a big holiday party and all their boards are there throughout the town and different village people. There must have been 40 people. Oh, yeah. for the meeting? Yeah, well, they uh, all, they did it yeah. during the meeting time, but they all got up and uh, basically it was kind of like a town meeting. They gave oh. what happened and if there's a rec department, yeah, this is good. what's happened this year in mm. rec. I love that idea. And the planning commission did theirs. Mm. And, I like that And idea. all around, and of course they had their two select board members on a, retired off the board here they had a big speech for them and they you know peter mangan get up and talk to and mm. he's on the they said out of, out of the oven into the frying pan because he's he's on the supervisory union i think oh right. yeah okay <laughs> fair maple run yeah yeah so yeah this it's it pretty interesting that's funny that's a great idea i like that but, yeah huh. so i don't know did, the rest of the board get the letter that we sent to Franklin? No, I, I didn't send that to anybody. I had just printed it for you oh, when you okay. came into the office. I think I have a copy of it here with me, if you want it. Yeah, I thought we should let them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, this has never happened to us. We've <laughs> quite a bit done here. We're waiting. Yeah. I know it's like time has stopped. I don't know what's going on. We're in some kind of universe. Here. <laughs> We're in some time kind of universe. Something. Matrix. <laughs> you know, I am a smart cookie, but that confuses I just, me. Yeah, it's been, I never, I, I watched it once. And I was like, what? I, it confuses me. And you know, there's another movie that actually does the same thing. Do you remember Total Recall? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that with any TikTok I've ever shown. Yeah. <laughs> right over my head. I mean, I... I know, it's funny I mean, how humor is changing. Like, my kids are like, I? this is so funny. I'm like, yeah, I don't... Like yeah. Napoleon Dynamite. I never Oh, I do think that. that's funny. So, you, see, Jessica thought it was funny. I'm like, you, must have, you have to be a smart person to understand that. I'm like, I don't get it. What was it? Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Dynamite. Oh. God. <laughs> yeah. Isn't their Uncle Rico on Napoleon Dynamite? Oh. Um. Here, take a look at it. You won't have time for all of it. What's that? A finger stuck in the metal chair. Oh. Oh. 14 months. 14 months. Oh. oh. Was that what it was? So, wow. Let's see that. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. The other bill that you were supposed to put your sticks of stuff. What's that? That's that right here. I'm still going. Oh, no, but what is it for? I'll find the, the right. long and short of it. Oh, for their office? Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know what you were Put that in curry? Is that you? He's pretty good. Does it pass on? No. Um. Hi there. Hi. Hello. How's it going tonight? Oh, not too bad. Pretty good. Okay, we're actually waiting for the next item to pop up, and I just walked in. You got Mrs. Squad here, the squad, or? You got Mrs. Squad. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be doing the Christmas tree and we are going to have to be going into an executive session with them. I'll move to go into executive. I'll second. Polly made a motion to go in executive session and appear second in that motion. Uh, any more discussion? If you have none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. 
It's approximately six. Right, so it's now seven o'clock. Next on the agenda is the Henesburg Ambulance Status Director Andrew Dunsmore and Jess Ramsey. Um, so we basically want to come to you guys on behalf of the membership itself. Um, kind of <coughs> um, talk about a proposal for a potential future status of the Innsbruck Ambulance. Um, this is something that the service, since I started, uh, has tossed around, talked about kind of thing. Um, it's similar to what you and I talked about on last Monday, mm -hmm. a 501c3. Um, so Monday, Larry and I, after Bakersfield kind of had talked, Larry brought it up that he had mentioned to BJ about looking into 501c3 and how to go about doing that, kind of whether or not benefit or not. Um, and as I said to Larry, you know, we've talked about it, looked into it a little bit. So we looked into it a little bit further, um, kind of ways it would benefit us, benefit you guys. Which, when you're talking we, you're talking... You and Jess? No, we um as in the membership. As in the kind membership. Of on it, and then like we have looked into it, like ourselves have done research. You mean you the workers, membership? Yeah, that's oh. the people who work here. Um Yeah. Um, just to kind of get it, their opinion and their so that we're kind of voicing for the membership yeah. as a whole. Todd Cosgrove has been very helpful. Yeah. Um, with his background and what he used to do. Yeah, working for the state. Working for the state, um, creating multiple 501c3s, different organizations he's been with. He's been very helpful with some guidance and stuff like that. Um, so we basically kind of looked over the overall um, service itself, what the benefits would be to both Enosburg, the town of Enosburg, yeah. and us as a service. Um, it kind of broke down a bunch of stuff. Um, so some benefits to the town of Enosburg. Um, basically, you guys wouldn't have to deal with any budget, nothing. Like for, yeah, for the service um, itself. And you, basically, you would be a contracted town like all the other towns we would contract with. So it would be a per capita rate only for you guys. No worry about budget expenses associated with the ambulance. That would be something we as a incorporation would create, take on ourselves, handle ourselves, deal with on our end. Um, Takes out, like you guys won't have to worry about our payroll, our health insurance, correct. all of that stuff kind of, the burden comes off of the town and is put on the 501c3. Which is gonna save the town of Meansburg quite a bit of money. Um, so instead of Budgeting for a $500,000 entity, you're only budgeting for whatever the per capita rate is going to be, just like any other town. Okay. Um, some other benefits is we talked about. So it basically sounds like you're selling it to this nonprofit. To create a nonprofit. Because right now, this is all of our assets, and right. we got nothing to show for it if we're just a per capita town now. Mm -hmm. So right. we're going so we to still own make, all that stuff. Absolutely. So we would so, have to make a plan correct. where, because the revenue is through. guaranteed, there are going to be, there are going to be calls no matter what. We ran nine, about 950 this year. Yeah, almost. Um, so the revenue is there. The receivables are there. Our budget currently, I'll be honest, it's not done right. And that's a big issue. So we want to, we're trying to fix that and get out of the hole. And really, the easiest way to do that would be either to become a 501c3 or join another 501c3. And now, so all the assets are yours, like the truck, is, all the trucks, the equipment, that's all owned by the town. But that can be arranged like in a contract where quarterly you get a third of our revenue until everything is paid off. Or however, like if it were something you guys were willing to look at and talk about, um, like something can be written up. As in a contract for paying off all the equipment. Correct. So, like, for example, we we as the East Ramblers currently rent the building still. So we would create a contract with you to rent the building, utilities associated with the building. So there's part of the contract. Any expenses associated with the ambulance, we would take over. So maintenance, fuel, supplies, um, the current payments left on the 
2017 will be part of that contract of, of the third of a revenue. Whatever is So we would basically pay you to pay that off. And the then once everything is paid off, like it would be transferred over to us. Like once it's paid off or whatever yeah. amount you guys feel like you would need for the assets, like if you want the things appraised or whatever. Um, yeah, but what building are you going to use? That's what we said. We that's could rent this building. And, so, and that would benefit the town of Enosburg still if we rented the building still from you guys because we rent it right now. Right. So we, we don't and, uh, we were we're almost right. gifting it, actually. Right. So the, which is but something that we would look at. It would price. be yeah, a contracted price that you guys like establish and let us know what you want paid. Um, and that it still benefits the town of Enosburg to have the ambulance here because you still have those faster response times versus right. contracting out with somebody else or another 501c3, you have to like arrange where they're stationing their ambulances or anything like that. Correct. Whereas we're looking to stay here, which is also something too, if like you guys didn't want that, I mean, we could always find somewhere else to rent. Right. Um, the other portion in that, in that contract would be the general fund debt. That would be included in there to get clear that debt out. Like I said, the remaining payments on the 17, remaining payments on the monitors, whether or not we would, or whether or not you would sell a 13 at whatever it's worth, or just sell it right out, okay. whether to us or just in general. Right. Um, like we said, we're willing to create contracts for the payments over a certain amount of time. So if we come like later on down the road, um, whatever's decided, you know, say there's, this is the way we go and they just you decide on the price. Then like Jess said, you know, we could come up with some sort of contract where it's like a third of the revenue quarterly, or like third of our revenue quarterly it, to make those. Like, you guys would have to like discuss that and figure out how we would pay that. And like yeah. all of that would be put in a contract. And then basically we would, you know, our thought would be, you know, paying you those payments to basically have what we have now. So subscriptions would still be included for all the towns. And that price would stay the same. Like that wouldn't change. So they'd still have the benefits of the subscriptions. Correct. Um, as far as the ambulance service goes, not That's much right. for care wise would change for the town or anything. You'd still get the same the same care and all that and same response times if you stayed here. Um, so so that is I mean that is kind of an issue. How would you staff it? We've had such trouble staffing it this past year. Our schedule it, actually. Is, how are you gonna How are you gonna add people to that so, when there's only a certain pool of people you can pick from for all the services? Right. So, so by us going to a five hundred one c three, we create our own budget. Within that budget, we are gonna budget for increase in salaries. Well, and just payroll to match what everybody else in the district right. is basically paying. Um, in doing so, I already know there's people that will be. There are a lot of people, like us. example, Masisquoi, that are available to run here, but won't because we don't pay the same. We don't pay what they pay. Right. Um, so we would. So we would gain employees would. that way. Um, and even right now, if we look like at the December schedule, I think really Christmas was the only days that we had a hard time. Christmas filling. and Christmas Eve. Everything right. else was pretty full. January look. January, we're still working on that schedule right now. Yep. Um, so January, I pulled myself out of the office, put myself on the truck. But what I also did was, because we had some per diems that were scheduled for 36 hours a week. Work, yeah. Yeah, I've cut them down 24. Yep. It shows open spots, but I've said to the people, if they're open, film if you can. So on the so schedule, it looks scheduling. open, but like one of the shifts that's open is one of the ones that was a scheduled per diem. So by putting them on 36, on 24 hours, it doesn't show that we're consecutive 36 hours a week scheduled. Because in theory, if somebody came in from the labor board and saw that, they'd be like, why aren't we offering them full time? Because they're working 36 hours minimum full time for the week. I'm confused. So if there's a blank spot on like Because Tuesday. they're not scheduled, like physically scheduled yeah. for the month, it leaves it as an open shift. Yeah. So it leaves it to anybody to pick it up. Okay. 
and then which is offered out to anybody so they can pick it up if they want but the per diems are scheduled for 24 hours okay. myself i've come off the truck and i'm on yep. my four days a week so the blank spots in january just means nobody's picked no, up those spots. nobody's been assigned to them at this time okay. okay. yeah and like so there's people okay. who are available to work it and the schedule just has actually hasn't gone out yet oh, okay. or it just went out today just maybe out today. to the membership so like we usually get feedback back on who needs to be moved around or who can pick up shifts mm -hmm. um so I think the schedule will look a little bit different in like next coming week. Right. Usually fills up pretty good lately. Yeah. So the so the way we basically see this 501c3, if we were to establish it going is being a an corporation overseen by a board of directors of the membership. Um, currently we would have be a board of directors of five people. You have three executive members, which would be our three full timers. And then we are two, two other employees that are voted on by the membership onto that board. The two employees we vote on every two years with an alternating year. So the first year, one of those employees will be on for three. Um, that way, you're not changing out your same employee board member, the same two every two years. You're alternating. It. Do they do a does a five hundred one c three usually have yes, employees? Yes, that is how board. it has to be. It has, it has to have a minimum of three board members, and it's within the like the service. So, but yeah, board members, but they have to be employees. Um, I'm not sure of voting. But I'd have to look more into that. It can be It could be community members. Yes. Okay. And then so, and we and also the other part. I just find it weird that the board members would consist of employees. Well, that's a lot actually about almost how all the ambulance services that are run like that, like Mrs. Boy, it has a seven-person board ran by solely their members. Fair so why wouldn't you just be thing. like, give them a raise? Well, because you lose your <laughs> service. So you, have yeah. to, you have to do it. <laughs> right. So the way okay. Fairfax does it is, Fairfax's board, I think they have five people on it. Okay. They have three of, out of the five, three of them are executive members. Out of those three, it's actually two employees from Fairfax Rescue. Two, right. And one of them is a community member. Gotcha. So on our board, we would also reach out to challenge, uh, whatever contract I'm challenge we challenge. have and ask for one representative from those towns to serve as a liaison. Yep. They wouldn't necessarily have vote, voting rights. But then that way we can still check in with the towns and you like get their opinions, um, any concerns that are, can be voiced. Um, that way you're kind of including the town in your service still. Right. Mm -hmm. um, our thought is if we were to go to this route, the incorporation would contract with Town of Unionsburg or put bids out like we normally would for any other town um, for a per capita rate. And then if, say, we've contracted other towns, what we would ask is um, basically a notification from the Town of Unionsburg that we've gone this way, asking if those other services would honor them. If not, that would be their choice, then we could approach them and um offer out new per capita rates or however they wanted to do it um and then fulfill the yearly subscriptions again uh, where else um make sure to check my notes what would you do about comstar we have those for a few more years so we would we would, we would, we would actually bill like, in-house you say you can save like i think we figured out 13, this year thirteen thousand saved um, within the budget if we did in-house billing it's really not that hard of like a job to do um like i've done it a little bit for mrs and it just it's time consuming um so whoever does that would need like a day or so it's dedicated to be in the office for billing um and i mean there is risks but like with everything there it's kind of like any other any other thing you can be reliable for and there are insurances to cover that Okay. Um, so yeah, we would switch that back to the in-house billing. Would the dispatch remain the same through the per capita that's already included? Yep. Yep. Yeah, nothing in the contracts would change. Just yeah, that's ownership, insane. basically. Yeah. Um, and in in reality, it's by. Going this route, we feel it's going to take 
a huge burn off of you guys. Um, but it's also going to benefit us as a membership to be able to look at our own finances, be able to handle our own finances, and be able to run our ambulance overseen by our board of directors in the sense in order to um you know stay afloat yeah but the thing is is that for what you're saying right now mm -hmm. how come you're not doing that now we need your we can't without you guys you guys like we're owned by the town so we have that's why we're coming here with the proposal to talk about it we can't be a 501c3 no 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 i'm not saying that but it's one of those uh scheduling you guys are able to do your own scheduling right, right. the billing we don't, it, we don't do our own billing. We have, right no, now. because that got taken away because things weren't being followed up. Which is by probably other the director. Right. We have a whole new previous. management. Yeah. Um. And I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. letting you know that the things that you're all offering, how come you're not doing them before? And you so all of a sudden. You guys oversee our budget and you propose the budget, you propose the per capita. Wait a minute. Rates. You folks. You don't, but Andrew has proposes, the budget. proposes that right. budget. And then you guys, but I don't know, right. you go with But I don't get final proposed. say yeah. whether or not it gets. For per capita rates? For that's why no, 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 that's completely now, different. So. I'm talking, we're talking, we talking budget, we're mm -hmm. talking per capita. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be well, separate. all falls in. But he gets to see all that. He gets to do all of that. Right. So yes, I, pr I propose a budget. But I don't get final say that this is going to be the budget. It goes to you guys, you get approval, and then it goes to the town. By us becoming our own incorporation, we do our own funding. Not only by us becoming a 501c3, this also opens us up for a lot more avenues with grants, fundraising opportunities, um, stuff like that. As a municipality, we're very limited on what we can do for fundraising. As a 501c3, there's so many avenues we can go. Um, in Georgia, our Fire and Rescue Association, we're a 501c3. We've raffled off three ATVs and made well over $20,000 doing that. As a municipality owned, we can't go and do that because of our tax identification. And just in general, the amount of grants that are out there for nonprofit, specific to Correct. nonprofit, it's like huge compared to municipality. I, ben and Jerry's grant, for example, I cannot, I cannot go to Ben and Jerry's website right now and apply for a grant because we are not a five hundred one c three. But we are a five hundred one c three. I can go online, apply for a grant, and get five thousand dollars for them, which would pay for three, four AEDs. CPR training equipment and stuff like that. So it opens up a lot more avenues and a lot of grants are that way. Um, a lot of your small businesses or local businesses um, benefit nonprofit agencies with grants and stuff like that. Thank you. Susan has a question. I came in late, but I just wanted to make note that if you came across something now, we can go that avenue. Um, the Opera House one time acted as an agent as a nonprofit for the art gallery, and so they were able to get the grant through Friends of the Opera House. So I think there's, and the EBA is, is striving to be that person as well, or that group as well. So if you saw grants now, you could go to the EBA to file it for you, and it would just be the wash, it would go in, it would go out. So um, if that's not the direction you guys go, and don't let that stop you from because there's many other ways you can do that. Yeah, right now we've got the ability to use the ARPA funds too. Uh, the others, when when you have contract in towns, those other towns can also use those ARPA funds to make up any substantial per capita raise that's being offered right now. So when you look at the dollar figures, they can they can look a lot different in the paper if you know where it's actually coming from when it can be utilized. What, we, what would be the time frame on this? So that would be our thought is if this was the way we would go, we would not become a 501c3 until the end of the year budget season. Fiscal, whatever the fiscal year. I don't year. know. When, when is, is it July the end of, or June 30th? The start is July 1st for the budget or is it January, January? 
January, January, December. So it's it's you know we wouldn't we want it until obviously the end of the budget season. January, so it's coming right up. Coming right up. We yeah, thought it was July. But either way, you um, mean this coming January? Well, you're not meaning wait a whole year. A whole wait a whole year. Well, you'd have to. I mean, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff to go through. Yeah. But yeah, we weren't sure what the like your budget year. We weren't sure like so if your budget ended in July of next so year or started next, or started. Start of the next, because obviously we're like Correct. weeks away from yeah, like the school. The school is July yeah, or July. Yeah, or, yeah. And so what do you think? Franklin's fiscal is that too. Yeah, that's how the rest of the town from January through December. So it would be the next budget year. Correct. So, yeah, like we said, it's just a proposal, some things to think about. Um, obviously, there is some stuff that has to be done right. backside. Um, um, the only thing that's been done is the name has been reserved to the state's, what's it called? Secretary, Secretary of State's office. So, Eastbury Ambulance Incorporated is the only thing that's been reserved, and that was paid for by personal funds. Um, and that doesn't mean anything, even if yeah. like if we don't, you guys say like no way, we don't want to do this. That doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It just means that name for anybody else is off the table. Like they can't Correct. be Ginsburg Ambulance Service Incorporated. Um, and like obviously we kept the name because of Ginsburg. We were thinking because like I mean it started in Ginsburg. This is we're almost, born and raised here in Ginsburg. We're almost at the 50 year mark. Um, 2024 will be 50 years of service. And then it has to be incorporation because that's. To right. be a five hundred one c three, um, but also if that's something you guys didn't want, like that name to be used, um, that's also something that can be looked at, um, and it can be Correct. like anything really. Um, but our, our idea was to keep the name because it did originate in Enosburg, and like I said, we're coming up in fifty years in, in Enosburg. Um, mm -hmm. It's just more of like a tribute to the town, um, but that's also like. A whole other discussion, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so we, I mean, we would have a lot of work to do on our end, um, but we are willing to put that work in to make this work. Um, it's just really what direction you guys want to go in. Um, oh, what scares nice. us the most, I think, is as an ambulance service, losing our towns is rough. Um, Especially with how big Amcare is, and now Mississippi Valley Rescue is huge. Um, You're assuming we're losing towns. I guarantee. I like, and that's just me, my personal. That sounds like your personal opinion. That yeah. is my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. Um, but with our the, like our per capita rates compared to. Mississippi, but that's that's the difference right there. The per capita, they can utilize the ARPA funds. So if you're looking at. What we're offering, right. we're the contracting town with them. They, nobody else they competing can do that with the ARPA funds. Right. They can utilize these some of these smaller towns. Hardly are able to have anything to use the ARPA funds, but they have the ability to reach them. Well, this is just another personal. But opinion. I'm just I'm just yeah, saying. Um, like anybody that I have talked to in the ambulance world, like laughs at that about us asking other towns for their ARPA funds because no other town is even doing that. Like Missisquay is not asking. No, no, no. We're not. We're not asking. But Missisquay can consider. We're suggesting it. Five hundred one three. It's a suggestion. Well, That's know, different than asking. Okay. We're only suggesting, so suggesting that you can use is, it. Is we're not telling exactly. Well, we're I know not you're telling. Not saying you have to. Right. Do it's a loss. It's a loss, and there's a reason for it. Because of the pandemic, it's we've lost revenue, lost calls. And we've actually had more calls. You've had last, you've had your your rates have gone up. Your your payments, your, uh, your salaries have gone up, uh, and you haven't been able to pay the general fund back. Well, and I think so that's all a budgeting issue. And that again, that's just. I don't. I don't know. We've gone over with Andrew the, the budgets, and I don't know where you're going to find the revenue. I think it's there. And it's not there. But our budget, I think if our budget is done, is revamped and done, like you're, we start off in the hole, which is strange to me. Um, yeah, but that's, yeah, but that line that's is, a loss. The hole I is think, a loss. And that's a, I think, can you pull up the budget? Do you have the budget yeah, somewhere? Yeah, try to find it.
But then the thing is, is that regardless if you start off in the hole or not, you've got to start with the with the first line, and that's our salaries. And my our salary, how much of our salary has gone up? Because I've been working. You did overtime for because you're lot. you're under man because insane. you can't find the people to run. But even right now, we're not over in salaries at all. No, we're not. We're twenty five thousand under. So salary is not the problem. And we only increased it five thousand, and actually it was decreased from. 2020. Actually, 2020, yeah, it was decreased by. But a little less than twenty thousand dollars. Because we decided we weren't going to spend that amount of overtime anymore, because we were having to pay so much in unemployment taxes because of it, and so we dropped. So 2020 the was three hundred and two thousand dollars. This is what we paid, yeah. But you budgeted three hundred twenty-three thousand, so you saved twenty-one thousand, less than twenty-one thousand. We haven't gone through twenty-ones yet. No, that's last year. That right, twenty twenty. Yeah. Last year. But that's what I'm saying. Twenty twenty, you you saved twenty-one thousand dollars in salaries. So we're going to come in two hundred eighty thousand dollars this year. Uh, I'm not sure what our current salary line is. I, I gave them a paper last week, but I didn't bring it with me. This is it the same one you sent me? Um, no, they had they had the increase in um, income last week. I hadn't changed. Oh, okay. So I hadn't yeah, changed I the expenses. I changed the income to show more income. Okay. I, so I, I think that's a lot to think about. I have to think about this. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's that is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, but we just kind of want to like put it out yeah, there. Yeah, I think that's. That's good to get it rolling around. Do you have any more particular questions before we move on? Do we need to see Andrew later, or are we are on anything else about ambulance? Or I don't know how to schedule him with that. You said there's some blanks there. But you said that's going to be filled. Right. They, they end up getting filled. Yeah. Right. There's so we within the next, have, we always have openings throughout the month, and there. By the by, that week they're filled. Yeah, that's not People pick up shifts here and there, and right. Because once I post it on the board, everybody comes in, looks at it every day, sees what's open. Oh, well, I can pick this shift up, or okay. I can pick this shift up. So okay. Yeah, it hasn't been. We haven't had issues of not having any nights where we can't stop it. Okay. And the the, the ones that we struggled with this month. It was Christmas Eve. And yeah, the big ones were Christmas and Christmas. Right. The only the only slot open right now is a six hour shift on Christmas Day. Right. Which I'm probably gonna end up having to pick up. And so and overtime how are we doing on that? Overtime is a little I believe it's a little less. I have to look. I know it's less than what, what it was during the summertime. And a lot of our overtime in the summer was because Jess was out on right. turn leave. Yeah, no, but I mean as of recent. Maybe. Is it what? Recently, as of recently, um, and the reason why I ask, and you can think, you can send that to BJ. Um, the reason why I ask is because if if you're if you have a lot of empty spots and you have all of a sudden at the last minute somebody taking a bunch and that right. results in overtime versus kind of like planning who does what and yeah, kind of monitoring I, that. Before if they fill it in on the schedule, I look at who filled it in. Yeah. Some of the shifts. I think like before they write it on the schedule, they right. have to go through. It's somebody the else. Like they'll message me saying, "Hey, looking to pick up this shift." Yeah. I'll put it out there if anybody else wants it. Okay. And it won't get, it won't officially be filled until last minute. If somebody else steps up who's got less hours, yeah. Obviously, they're going to get it other over the person that's got more hours. Okay. To cut down on that overtime. Okay. We we send a lot of them. Okay. Do separately. Um, I think we are at. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Let me just see your overtime this month. Mm, it's actually lower than what it usually is. Just glancing at it. See, that's something that all the overtime should be a savings if you had enough people. Right. Working, but then you're not, not wanting everybody to get paid more. Really so then it's going to bounce it right back. And that, well, that so it's a it's, so it's the a biggest, give and take. The biggest thing I hear from people who express interest, the question is, how much do you pay? 
And when I tell them what we pay, they're like, seriously, I can go here or here and get paid three or four dollars more. Right. Yeah. So what I think what Larry's saying is if we drop the overtime down enough, right. we can raise the hourly the, and yes. we still don't we don't we still don't make the number though. bigger is what he's saying. Right. Yeah. Okay. But the problem is I people aren't wanting to apply at our base rates. Right. So or even just per diem, like I know that there's some people who happen to be in town on vacations and they want to fill a couple hours here and there. Um, you know, anybody that's willing to work for our service, we should take advantage of. Um, fire but yeah. department. Fire, oh yeah, fire department. Well, we're exactly. waiting for that, that um, first so, responder course yes. that there were several firefighters that took it. Um, it's just not signed into like legislature not, yet. It's you not have official. To wait for it it's, right. should be that by the, I guess, January now. January 1? How Ooh, many firemen? There was, oh, there was quite a bit. Three, four. So did they take away the fact that firemen could draw? Remember what, during so COVID? So that's they, starting January 1st. It's, it's gone. stopping. Yep, so um, actually, it I think it's already gone. No, I think it's the 31st. It's the 31st, 31st the last day that you can be a non-certified driver. So their their hopes is that the state legislature will pass this new certification. And then that will, that will allow them to basically drive. Continue like things have been for the last year or so. Because that because, because that, that could be key to, to manning that second rig and you know, some of the second rig miss yeah. And, and exactly. that's usually what happens. Like the level of care though we provide to the town that we're an ALS service, so we should strive to kind of be like that. Because a first responder, so it's a certification, but they really can't do much. They don't do anything. They are just there to drive. So like it's nice to have a certified partner, like if it's a bad call or even if there's just a lot that needs to be done on scene, um, like you kind of want that certified member so that they can take vitals and use the monitor. Um, but aren't they certified in, in CPR? CPR, yes, CPR, but they can't right. touch the monitor. They can't, oh, okay. like as they far as vitals. They can't put a blood pressure up on somebody. No. They can give them Narcan, okay. that's it. Okay. So yeah, for like, so like for CPR purposes and stuff, they are CPR certified. Right. Um, and I think it's like basic. The, the thought of this first responder the state first responder thing is, if you if your normal crew shows up on a scene where you need more certified hands in the back, you can grab one of those certified firefighters to drive for you. Mm. That was the thought behind it. Right. They jumped the gun pushing it out because mm -hmm. they didn't even have state approval. They had put it through their lawyers. Lawyers like, oh yeah, sounds good. And then they put it out to a public quorum the same time they were holding these classes. Oh, okay. So it hasn't even been approved by the state or the government at all. Right. Once that is approved, we'll have right. at least four people or so. Okay. Yeah. All right. To I guess cool. move the agenda along. All right. Perfect. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank sure. You. Thanks for for doing all that that research. Yeah. Susie, I think you're up. Batter up. Quite some more. Sit wherever you want. Yeah. yeah. I want to be that close to you. I know. Okay. <laughs> a little cookie? <laughs> oh, yeah. I gotta get closer a little bit. No, I haven't eaten dinner yet. Don't start. I'm here to ask to create a fund that would be funded by the amounts that are unexpended in the appropriation. A capital improvement fund, or we could say, you know, replacement flooring and door fund, or whatever, I just see that it could be a revolving fund. Kind of off the, the talk about trying to create something that would be there for those things that come up, without going to ask for more money, we mm -hmm. get, what's the allocation this year, 25,000? Yes. 25,000. The line item right now is at $20,890. Could potentially have three, four thousand that could go in, moved over by the end of the year, legally, to a capital improvement fund. And then that could be used when we're in excess, um, um, need to repair the doors. Uh, what did you say? Uh, the uh, thing on the insurance, deductible on the insurance for the rich cap. Um, I've got a spreadsheet going back for years, and like 2019, I think at that year we were 30,000, and we only expended 
you know, we didn't we didn't expend that. And I don't know if these numbers are full. My spreadsheet might not be fully complete, but each year, other than 2017-2018, um, we've been under our appropriation, and it'd be great to have that sitting in a fund. We're going to plastic over those doors upstairs, but they're at the top top of the list. We have to get a bid in. We're going to get a bid in and come back to you and say, we've got to figure out how to do these doors. They're being held by a clicket strap. Mm. Right now, they don't shut. Mm. They, um, it's awful. So um, that definitely needs to be done. I've got a few thoughts about doing some replacements and and um, some patrons who might fund um, possibly the carpeting and the stairwell, which it looks deplorable, but I don't think any of that has been replaced since the renovation was in, what, 20, 1980? When was there? It was the 19th. 1987. It was the 19th. <laughs> it was not the 20th. So, <laughs> so at least 20 years. We're talking 30 <laughs> plus years on some of these things, mm -hmm. and um, we're, um, we're still looking at that grant on planning, um, and I'm sure that's going to bring up things where something's going to come up and we're going to need to match or do something with stuff there. But um, there's definitely you know, upkeep to be continued, and we're willing to do the work to find those funds and to look for them. But I think it's heartbreaking at the end of the year. Like, oh, so just squeeze one more project than we would have right because it's already been pulled from it's the already been allocated. Already been yeah so you're saying if you have any um leftover, leftover it would just roll into a capital improvement yeah but i think um you, you were thinking there has to be like a and i quickly looked at statutes like there might be like if you have a capital improvement fund yeah which would be something you would need to approve and create before the end of the year this year. Right. <laughs> so that those monies could be put in there before. Well, couldn't you just do a line? You, like you could do a line that says yeah. replacement. Yeah, exactly. Building building parts, materials, yeah. window. I mean, right. yeah. yeah. You have to be and then town meeting, it, it can be voted on. And yeah. yeah. Is it okay to put it? That we, yeah, because, you know, that would just be great. It, it kind of keeps, it kind of balances things out, you know, if there's a year yeah. that. I don't sure. know what you were talking about here, but if we yep. went over and there's uh, 3,000 pull-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would it be an article that the you voters really, would no, approve? No, you don't really need to, no. but you do have to ask to to allocate unexpended funds like this. Right. So if when you're doing your budget, like she said, if there's money left over and you've already made the decision, that's what you're going to do. It just goes in there. So then yeah. at town meeting, you don't have to ask every single year, like Mark does with his replacement. Right. Fund. But but in the same <laughs> sense is, let's say they have 3000 left over and we put that in a line like, oh, 3000 in the building repair fund or whatever, then we're not give, giving them 22000 We're not lessening. Do you see I what I'm saying? No, exactly. That's no, why. No, no, no. So, so, do you see what I'm saying? I think I, I think I do, but no, you don't have to have an article. You don't. No. Okay. To ask, right? Right. So the taxpayers would say right, because that still, every year you're still giving twenty five. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, that that's what I'm requesting. There's definitely things that need to be done. We haven't really worked on the mitigation of mildew downstairs but we don't have people there um, that entails definitely pulling up all the carpeting in the back um, which probably we're not putting down carpeting again no we? okay perfect no. Yeah. something like this yeah something. exactly the only thing is the stairwell definitely you want things yeah. quiet right um, traction just so it's not loud when there's a thing going on and I'd like to when we get to that point, I'll be back with you to let you know, but definitely going to look into some like treadwell lights mm -hmm. so that the little treads are lit, mm -hmm. lit up in the stairwell when people are going up and down. Um, and, I, and I have an idea. I've got sticks coming tomorrow to give me a figure on replacing that carpet in the stairwell. And then I've got someone I'm going to ask to see if they would fund that. And, um, and then the question is also with what are your plans with ARPA funds? Is there something that we should be saying to you? Hey, consider doing this or that with. So that's going to have to be a combination, right? Because we're only getting half. The that's a complicated question. The village gets some, the town gets some. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if you know the history of the people, 
and how the town is divided if people outside of the village limits get money. What does that mean? I mean, that's like a highway department. Yeah. So that's kind of, it's very complicated for Enosburg to figure this out. How are we going to do it to be fair that everybody but just like the ambulance here, we're talking the about, uh, we could say, okay, our, use ARPA funds, but we can only do it basically for the highway district people, because we don't have the ARPA funds for the village. For the village. So, we, so do, we would have to request. So, like the opera house is in the general fund, which is town and village, mm -hmm. there is no general fund for ARPA. Correct. Right. So, oh, I yeah. should be getting on the agenda with the trustees. Well, that's. I, to me, I think that's the way we have to do it because we no, that's good we have to ask. Yeah. I mean, it's for all the people, so it should be coming from yeah. Yeah. equally from. But when they per allocated the money, it was people outside of the village. It's this many people, so it's this much many dollars, and then they did the same with the village, based on their population. Okay, it's unfortunate they did it that way. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Instead of just that, but. instead of just running through through the general fund. Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. it, it, it's you know it's definitely doable from boards, but it's it's not a step that you're gonna have to. And then since I'm here, I'll just update on the grant part. So we, Denny and I looked at it, and I was like, oh god, the language is so. I'm just not. I just don't have the time to do this. So is it? I don't know if we. So we had agreed as a opera house board that we would expend opera house funds to pay a grant writer to help us. And Denny looked at it um, and thought, well, is it even relatable to us because of the way it's wording? Um, so we had a quick meeting with um, Heidi, who's mm -hmm. also on our board. Right. And Heidi said, absolutely, and no, you're not paying anybody, I'll do it. So she's oh, wow. taking the lead and she's Good. gonna do oh, nice. the writing Great. of that grant. Um, that does entail some sort of match if we get it, um, I think it can go all the way up to sixty thousand, maybe, for for the planning grant. Um, and I couldn't tell you what the match is, but I think it, we have some back end work to do, um, getting some general estimates, and then that becomes the basis of what we ask for. So I'm not even sure if we're asking for sixty or what yet. But so I will come to you guys um, probably early in January to, we have to do a resolution and I'll ask for approval on that and then we have to do some sort of public public notice, mm -hmm. which could be one of the meetings. Um, yeah, we meet the 3rd? January 3rd? Yes. January 3rd. <laughs> and we also meet we don't have to um, January 3rd and the 10th. And the 17th. Oh, we're not doing a whole month like we did. The third and the seventeenth. Uh, last year we did all We're gonna start doing. But Mondays. oh, that's right, because of the Monday. We're gonna meet every Monday. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yes. Every Monday. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> for me, but um. Yes. The beginning of the month is probably less intense. Yes. On budgets. Yeah. yeah. Don't go well, hopefully I'll, I'll. If there's anything like that, I'll try to get you some stuff beforehand yes, so we can please. just come in and yeah. do it real quick, not take up a lot of your time. And to be able to even read half of that stuff. And, yeah, um, then whatever you can send this way, and then I can shoot it out to them before the meeting so that yeah, you can have yeah. a chance to look at it. Other than that, all I can tell you is we did have, um, had a couple rentals. We had an anniversary party. Um, we had a dance studio that came in. They were really excited. They'd never been there. Brought in a lot of people from St. Albans area. Nice. Who's never been in the Opera House, so we always loved that. She was super excited, so I think we might get her back. Nice. Hopefully again another year that would be great and it's great creating those relationships because lots of times we have plays or whatever that have dance scenes that are beyond your normal clodhopper hopper talent can pull off so it's great to have a dance studio you can pull in to help you with that and then we um, did a virtual holiday special mm -hmm. last I Friday was which great. was kind of che with cheesy was the thing we were going for and um, Wes Kempton put that together he's also on the board of Northwest Access TV and Jennifer Rainack and her husband are involved heavily with that so technically it was pretty cool it comes in with a drone all over Enosburg before it gets to yeah. the Opera House if you go to YouTube Northwest Access TV and take half hour of your time I wonder if that's the guy that did the Franklin Lights there he had a drone flying all oh, no. over I there. thought that was well that's probably there's Greg. Armand Messier no it wasn't Greg it wasn't Armand Messier he does some no he dressed stuff. up like the Grinch I don't oh, know who it was. was that was Chad oh. Chad March. Oh, neat. I don't think that was who it was. So, so we had those rentals. We had that. We had the dance studio, and then the last 
Saturday, um, Operation Happiness to use the, that building because this is a COVID testing site or something. It is. It is. So they were able to commit to this. So um, it worked out really great. They came in one end of the parking lot, out the other, 58 families. Um, Rhonda Fletcher was able to organize it all with um, some food shop volunteer helps and the National Honor Society. Neat. So it was a four day event between putting everything together. Pretty amazing. Um, I, she's got pictures, we're going to post them and, you know, publicize what everybody did and mm -hmm. what happened at the Opera House, but um, it worked out really well. Nice. So, nice. That's good. That's nice. all I have. All right. Super. Sounds great. Yeah. So yeah, I think we can definitely do something with carrying over the funds. And yeah. Well, it would just help not, and you're not having yeah. to ask because right. it's already there. Yeah, exactly. And if it's already allocated for and, you know, and if you're not using it, why yeah. not? If something's coming up, then we can, and then I will um, look into the uh, village with, with ARPA funds mm -hmm. to, you know, maybe, maybe they can come up with something that funds the doors and but right. you know, it's going to be much more than $3,000 of it to fund those doors. Mm. So. Right. Yeah, it, I mean, need to be it's something that though. we both, the question is going to have to be asked to, to both boards. Right. Is that something so split like the a trade school or the Cold Hollow, is that something that they can undertake? No. This is like historic preservation work. Yeah. Right. It, you know. The thing with ARPA, too, it should tie somehow to COVID, but um, to think about that, too. If there's well, somewhere. we lost all our right. programming. Right. No, exactly. We lost all our programming. We could show what we were normally making. Right. But, um, so maybe it's just a yes. It's matter of narrative that you right, gave right. to right. say how this affected you. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Susan. Hey, Susan. Hey. David. David. Hi, David. I'll be over after. How are you? <laughs> Actually, my project's pretty light duty compared to these. All right. <laughs> So we like so to hear. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna bother you too much. Um, so, uh, starting kind of back in the spring, we were at one of the EI meetings and we were discussing items around the community that we could look at to improve um, the appeal here. And we came up with the community signs on the major highways coming into town thinking that after like the time that they've been out there, that they basically need an upgrade or a, a change, actually. So since that time, Sally and myself, we volunteered to look into this project. Uh, <clears throat> and we spent most of the summer going over it. We, we talked with, uh, we talked a lot with John Johnson, had ideas about signs and that sort of thing. Um, we went to the trustees last meeting, I guess it was last week, and we got uh, approval from them. They're, they're going to uh, co cooperate with us and uh, put in their upcoming budget uh, enough money for two, two of the signs. There are four out there right now. So the reason I'm here, to make it short, is to ask for your cooperation in this project and ask if you might be willing to maybe fund the other two signs. Uh, we just had this meeting, what, two meetings ago? Yeah. Uh, Polly uh, saw the other towns that are going into other towns and they have great signs and welcome to Bakersfield right. or whatever town it is. So we were saying we thought that would be something great for Enosburg, but not the village, we're you know, coming from Bakersfield it should be a nice sign there, and then coming from the other direction. So is that something that we can coordinate, and instead of having them at the village, put them out on those out, outsides? On the we town, can, on the we'd town be willing ones. to put them out, so coming from Bakersfield into Enosburg, and then then coming, then there might be a village okay, sign. Okay, so, so basically what's out there right now, Mm -hmm. Our signs are put there by the Lions Club. Right. Um, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Long ago. Yeah. yeah. And, and they are, I think, where you're talking about, right? Well, so we had talked about, um, I think it was like, there was somebody who had posted um, that they were going around the state and posting the welcome signs. And there was the Enosburg sign. And I was like, oh, that looks pretty sad, that sign not dissing the Lions Club. But it's 
pretty sad. <laughs> so we were saying how wouldn't it be great if we had welcome to Enosburg signs, right, posted on different <clears throat> places. But of course, the village of Enosburg starts right at the village, like Enosburg starts at the village of Enosburg on 105. On 105, yes. Right? Exactly. So that would be absolutely appropriate to have welcome to the village of yeah. Enosburg Falls, right? Yeah. Um, but we had talked about, um, before we even found out about, about your idea, um, that wouldn't it be great to have coming from Bakersfield on 108, there'd be a welcome to Enosburg. Um, like at the town line. At the town line. And then coming in from East Berkshire, um, on 105, um, welcome to Enosburg. So those aren't necessarily, we hadn't talked dis distinctly about the village. Clearly the village at the Sheldon line makes a ton of sense, but would it be redundant to have welcome to the town of Enosburg, welcome to the village of Enosburg, I guess is the only question. Let me, let me, s yeah. let me say something. Okay. So, so this, yeah, it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Everything right. to do with yes, I know, I know, I know. So I'll pass this around. Okay. I, I didn't have enough ink to print a bunch of them, and uh, these are ideas that, that we've come up with. So where so were you thinking about placing them? Okay, I guess so let me say one thing. Okay. So oh, this is kind of cool. Full, full well known that the Lions Club put those signs out there yeah. about 30, 35 years ago. Uh, my first stop. In September was to the Lions Club meeting. Yeah. And now, yeah, at that the meeting, meeting, the folks were, were quite of. taken yeah. up with this. Right. Uh, since then, I've heard from town. Mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. Some not so we did a smaller sign. But yeah. Albert, Hiroshi, Hiroshi, yeah. uh, apparently is kind of the Lions the line Club sign guru. Okay. And I have been talking with him mm -hmm. a lot. And he's quite taken up with this idea. So I think if I can if I can get your support along with the trustees, yeah. you know, and I think I mean I mean the Lions Club and, and maybe the Lions Club, I'd be happy and we'd be happy to have the Lions Club yeah. help us you know, mm -hmm. right. with this project too. So back to where were you going to place them? The only thought so far yeah. is right where the Lions Club signs are. Oh, okay. So, two, but I, there's two. No, there's, there's, there's four. four. There's four. So there's one and one. West Berkshire. Oh, oh by on the West Pothier. Berkshire Road by Pothier's Farm. Oh, I don't oh. think I've ever uh, seen that. It's right after the Berkson bed and breakfast. Yeah, yeah. but before Ben's. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've noticed and it. And then where is and it? And the other one, uh, I think that you're missing is uh, coming in on 108. Yeah. Uh, right by, uh, by Pat. By Pat. Pat I think I actually yeah, have that seen that one. Yeah. And one by Leach's oh, area. Leach. Yeah. And then by mousetrap. Now I haven't told you how much these things are each, and and this is only an estimate because I mean we really haven't decided on anything. Really. Yeah. Right. But John has given me an estimate, and it's uh, uh, basically seventeen seventeen hundred piece. Seventeen hundred piece. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you know, the way I look at it, you can't buy a half of a used car for. What so doing. would it? Would it destroy the vision to have some town of Enosburg and village of Enosburg? Both. Yeah. Well, that's what's on there. Well, no. Well, it's no, kind of a, so, it so, so you can put a leaving the village and be saying entering town of town of Enosburg. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, the right. it's municipality, so basically they're asking half of our residents to pay for their bill. So what are we getting? What are the people on the outside getting? You know, I mean, are they going to pay for the signs that we were already talking about on the borders of the town? Yeah. You know, that's, right. That's, yeah. Why did they only yeah, pay for two? Wait, 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 I'm wait, curious. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that's why. I, yeah. I know. Wait, we're getting into this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no. But uh, the way I look at it is we're community. Yeah. I mean, right. you know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. You guys have spent the last umpteen years yeah. in that building down here. Which is in the middle of the village. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you're going to move to your new facility mm -hmm. down still the street, the which is still in the village. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I think all these folks in the village probably pay property tax. 
on um, their property to, to the town. Pay property tax. Wait. To the town, town and village. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. In yeah. the village. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, I mean, we really are one. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so again, back to with forget that. About, forget about the bridge and all that other stuff. <laughs> Oh, we have. <laughs> I wasn't going to try to go. We have that. not. No, we no, haven't. Really. But would it destroy kind of the vision if you had both? I, I I would. I think I would lean toward what Larry was talking about. Yeah. Post a sign on the border. Yeah. Yeah, a small sign. Yeah. This is Enosburg. Yeah. Uh, you know, the this Enosburg. Is Berkshire. Or, and or then welcome whatever. to the yeah. Enosburg Falls. And then and then down the road you come across this. Double signs? I don't know. So, see, so, see, here's another thing. Yeah. Well, just, Susie was just talking about the fund, funds for uh, the Opera House and stuff. Right. And I kind of, I don't know if it was town meeting or where, or I talked about the conservation fund. Money has already been raised by all the taxpayers, mm -hmm. and it's too bad you can't grab into a fund that's already existed, already been pulled to do something like right. this. Uh, but I don't think we have it set up like that. No, that would be the same as the, like the Opera House. No, not the Opera House. The Historical Society is right. It? Right, exactly. Um, you know, I know I could I could run out like the Opera House and and beg somewhere else. You know. Yeah. But, but no, I, yeah. in reality, I think I think it really rests with the village and the town. To do something like this. Yeah, we were just what it just happens to be that we were having the same idea at the same time, and now we're just finding out about it. But um, yeah, I know. Because yeah, we, we were talking to what would the what would we put on the sign? Yeah, yeah would, exactly. Like I, that's why your picture. We were thinking like, oh, when you enter the village. The, you'd have the dam, and, and if you were putting it on the Bakersfield line, you might have another historical marker, and um, yeah. like we were, we had, had this conversation. Yeah. Maybe have the fire department or yeah. something. And the and the spavin cube. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that sign, I, I believe me, we've been looking at signs all over the yeah. country. <laughs> we were just in Maine, and we, yeah. we, I saw. I saw. we were looking at signs. And yeah. But the Montgomery sign is it's a nice sign. Yeah. And I was talking with John and uh, the material is thick material. Yeah. And it's engraved. Yeah. But he said that the, one of the issues with that sign is he said it's it's expensive. And he said if that sign is beside of the road where someone can get it with a bottle, yeah, they're gonna hit it and they can't fix it. Oh, oh. interesting. Yeah. Because of the material, like yeah. it, the way it's engraved. Oh yeah, that's makes sense. Huh? They, they can't fix it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what we were looking at for this was it's a it's like a quarter inch of acrylic. It's, it's like aluminum board, right? And it's sandwiched with, yeah. right. with the oh, okay. six thousandths of aluminum on each right. side. Huh. Uh, and then he puts his he puts his sign on, then he actually clears it our, our with the uh, paint, oh. real clear, right? Now, you now some of our signs to begin with had a line on the bottom that said that uh, um, the home of the Vermont Dairy Festival. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I like that a lot. And I don't think there's room on this particular version, but I've been thinking about what I might like to see is another strip of that material, just drop down a few inches, and put on the same sign mm -hmm. that. That wording. Mm. Apparently, the dairy capital of the U.S. or something. So the charter date on here is for the town, not the village. That is the town. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and well, I think we could remove so that. Theoretically, you could we do could, four we could signs. Charter. We could we could put and we could eliminate the charter all together. Two yes. on the east side, and then these two, and then fold it through the general fund. Right. Right. It's everybody. It's everybody part of it. Yeah. It's everybody's. Yeah. Be four signs. Two would be the village, two residents. Would be, two would be the town. Exactly. And, and then fold it through the general. And you've, I've seen towns where they'll have like welcome <clears> to <throat> the town line, and then like you know, then you see sometimes another sign that says like historic downtown district or whatever they've done stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But we wouldn't have any delineating Berkshire from 
anus burp. Is that is that what you're saying? When you say two and two, do you mean that? I'm they saying you, be you'd be coming from Berkshire, and right on the line, it'd be welcome to Enosburg. Oh, so you are still saying that? Yeah. Okay. And okay. then there'd be one over to Hall. Yeah, yeah. And then there'd be these two that he's pitching tonight. So there'd be four in total. But he has two pit. He's got two purchased from the village, so he yeah, has those, four total. So there's two that the village yeah, are going to put up one, that are on that one. Right. Berkshire line right. And, and then Sheldon line. Where it's actually coming into the village yeah. from the other town. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so then there'd be the one, yeah, the one up there and the one in Watertail Road, right? No. The ones you're talking about? No, no it'd be one of West Berkshire. By Ben Pothiers. I don't think there's No, one. sorry, yeah. Uh, on the main state highways. Right. Yeah. Now, wait, wait, wait. Wait. yeah. Uh, now I've got another gotcha. question and I don't I don't know this much about it. Um, those signs are those signs that are out there right now, they're far enough off the highway not to be in the right of way, is that correct? They're in the they're right of way. way. You think they are? Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. it's a fifty foot right of way. From it's typically no. four four rods From on start. the main highways, so it's sixteen point six. Is it sixteen point? So he told me just last week, sixteen point six. So we would have to be I asking V Trans six inches if we could put signs in per there. rod from the center. Even if we just did a replacement. I don't. I don't know. I'm just uh -huh. asking a question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have to call. That's a good question. V Trans. Actually, get the right away on these state highways. Right? Joey, would, Joey would have a phone number to Yeah, because he, he has to put signs up all the time. Mm -hmm. need to be contacted. And is there a different category between road signs and sign signs? He would know. Could you, could you ask Joey to yeah. do that? Yeah. I think somebody thought it would be a great idea. And you, there's questions that we were. I know. Yeah. We were just That's talking about done, it. For sure. Actually, the village, the village had just. John had just started the conversation and, and someone spoke up and said, hey, look at this. Well, it was, you know what it was, it was like, I, I love Vermont or something like that, um, like a Facebook page, and somebody said, I've, I've been to every town, and they had all these pictures. Well, and there's a 253 club. Oh, is there? Yeah, there's yeah. a club, oh. right, 253. Yeah. Yep. It's a of towns in, in oh. Vermont that you yeah. go... You had to you had to actually oh, prove yeah. you've been there by right. taking a picture of the post office or right. a sign. And I was like, oh, yeah. so Something sad. Like so it's yeah. like a club that's yeah. Yep, that's funny. And and uh, you're right. All the all the towns all around. We were in, we were down on the coast in Maine this last weekend, mm -hmm. and they've all got these nice beautiful signs. Nice signs. And, I mean, it's it's just time. It's yeah, time. it's totally yeah, time. Sure. Absolutely. 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 For sure. Right. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yeah. Nice presentation. Okay. So. I can assume that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we were talking four, so uh, I mean, it, that shouldn't be an issue to put it all on general fund because we're we're paying for two. Village is paying for two, and then ours are going in town areas. And so we'd be we'd be having two new ones besides the two that he's right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and 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 you will talk with John about your two. Yeah, we were talking. Yeah, we, we talked about that because we were John trying to get John. ideas and we. Yeah. We said John John was a, a good one. We made some good signs up here. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Okay. The, all right, that's the last uh, item on my agenda I have in front of me. I'll second. There you go. <laughs> so compare made a motion. Phil's <laughs> motion to adjourn. I assume that's what you guys are talking yeah. about. Yep. Any more discussion? If having none, all those in favor of adjourning, say anybody say no. Aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Well, thank you. You guys get your work. Have a Merry Christmas. Don't we?